Hello, welcome to Kyoto, Japan. So I'm super excited to be here and also to show you. So currently we are in the downtown area of Kyoto. This is how the downtown area vibes look like. This is the weekend, it's a Saturday. So you can see it's very crowded, a lot of people from every direction and I'm loving it. Look at this, give you a little panoramic view, the area. And something I do want to tell you, I just arrived from Osaka, Japan. So if you want to come from Osaka, Japan to Kyoto, I advise you come to this station over here. It's the Hankyu Railway, Kyoto Kawara Machi Station, exit 1B. I hope I said it correctly. You can see these are like the opening hours and closing hours. And here's just a map of the area. So in this area, you're going to find a lot of things to do and to see. So if we go to our left, this is where the main downtown area is and one of the main streets of Kyoto. We are going to save that for another video because right now I want to show you this beautiful village in Kyoto. It's like old school Japanese village that has many beautiful things to see like old traditional Japanese housing, which I love. And then also it has people wearing kimonos and it's about to be sunset in an hour or two. So I was like, I had to show you that first and then we'll come back here and then we'll see more of the downtown area too. And you just see, I'm um, waiting for the traffic light over here. Uh, there's a McDonald's right there. Also, Family Mart too is pretty famous here, like a convenience store in Japan. And I just want to show you this like little river front area. It's really cool. This whole area, they have like a lot of water fronts and river fronts. It's nice. I just actually was just sitting down over here and I saw like a few ducks and stuff, but I guess they just left. Mm. Yeah, they left. They're here. I would show you how it is. It's just a really happening area. And smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos around Japan and also around the world. I really appreciate it. And also want to show you like this is a Japanese taxi over here. This is a, they usually use Toyota Crowns as a vehicle for Japanese taxis. You see over here. That's a newer one and then that's the older one, Japanese taxi. What's cool about the Japanese taxi is when you enter they usually open, it, open up the door for you automatically. And yeah, this is the same kind of taxi car they use in uh, in uh, Hong Kong as well. They love the Toyota Crowns because it's very reliable and very good to fix if it does have a problem. So yeah, I just want to comment on McDonald's in Japan. Every like month they'll have new promotion, new things. Like right now they're promoting this McCafe type of drink. It looks like a strawberry drink with also like some, uh, what is that French thing called? You know, macaron, macaron. Yeah, they have a macaron over here. It's really delicious. So if you do love McDonald's, definitely McDonald's in Japan is really nice. They have like a lot of nice like special thing. I think I just had like a banana, I don't know, banana pie or something. Banana cream pie, I forgot, but it was really good. And then we're gonna walk forward here a little bit. And I did investigate this area just before I came here. And I came here a few years ago too, so like, yeah, I mean, I, sorry. I investigated this area just before I recorded. I want to show you this beautiful restaurant over here. It's a Chinese restaurant and just look at the uh, decorations on the building. It's really nice and like, yeah. So it's called Chinese restaurant Toka Saikan. So something that's really nice about this restaurant, not just like the, obviously the architecture of the building, that uh, they have this beautiful area over here. You could sit and eat and then look at this view over here. It's marvelous. I love it. A lot of people over here are just enjoying their Saturday, chilling by the waterfront. I do see a couple guys fishing over here too. There's some nice cool places to chill out and relax. So looks like there's a crow over there and a pigeon. So a lot of birds there as well. Really cool place. Even they, they have some people just dipping their feet in the water, which uh, hopefully the water is pretty clean, but I'm sure it's all right. And also we have like another like rooftop restaurants I see over here and a beautiful traditional like big size building but it also has like Japanese architect architecture on top. Very cool. Man, it seems very relaxing. Because I just arrived here, I was like, man, I kind of want to relax but also want to show you guys too. So I was like, let's do both. Let's relax, talk with you, show you how it is and also investigate the area. Also, uh, something I want to tell you, I just saw two people riding their bikes here. 
that in Japan, if you're a foreigner and you want, oh, I'm guessing if you're a foreigner and you're watching this video, that you can rent bikes too. So any city you go to in Japan, from what I've seen, that you can rent a bike for like, depending what kind of bike you want, maybe for like $5 USD, $6 USD. They have electronic bikes and then electric bikes, then they also have uh, non-electric bikes, but I, go with electric bike. You save so much time, go faster, and it's so much fun. Last time I was here, I think I got an electric bike for about 1,300 Japanese yen, which in dollars USD, it's about like $8. Well worth it for a whole day. And then here's also a bus in Kyoto too. Really cool. I just like to see the vehicles in every country because every country they change their vehicles. Even like, for example, I was in China and Buick had a van, a Buick van, or Mercedes too has a van too, but in some countries you won't find a Mercedes uh, van. So I always like to go to different countries and see what kind of vehicles they have too. Now let me see if we could find somebody in their kimono. Mm, looks like not, we're not finding anyone in their kimono. Yeah, and from what I've been seeing that a lot of people, like, so I came to Japan two years ago, and from what I've been seeing that there's a lot more foreigners now, and the tourism industry is actually blooming because it's the summer too, so the weather's great. If you wanna come, come now. The, the weather is pretty good. Came here before in August, it was very hot, but right now I'm recording in June. Very good weather. Seems like this is another railway station. I'm trying to cross the street there, so let's go over here. I think I hear someone, oh yeah, look at this. So there's a few street performers here as well. And also some street sellers. Hello, hi. And now we're gonna cross the streets and see. Here you see these girls right over here are wearing the traditional Japanese kimono. There, there are a lot of rental places here too. So just let me just go away from the people real quick as I want to talk to you. There are a few kimono, well actually, I don't know how many kimono places there are, but from me walking around before and also currently just before I recorded the video, well, let's cross the street, but yeah. There's places to rent a kimono and it's, I saw one place, it was like one, one gram, one Japanese yen. So you just have to see. And it's very hard to put on the kimono too, so a lot of the places will actually put the kimono on for you. Life in Japan. You know what's kind of interesting to me in Japan? They have a lot of foreign workers that will work at the convenience shops, restaurants, you name it, which is kind of different. That there are a lot of old people. I know Japan and Korea have a big aging population. Something that I have not seen in any other place in the world and I think also they have a big problem because of that. Because now like a lot of people are relying on the workforce, the workforce is not so many so that's why they have a lot of foreigner employees to kind of like fill a gap. Good luck to the, uh, both of the countries, I love them both. And it's kind of interesting just to see in the future how it works out. This is a bus station. And I did see people were uh, just before I recorded the video that people were like scanning their phone to like pay for their bus ticket and if we see it during the video I'll show you how it is. It's kind of interesting, never seen that. To like get off the bus they're all like scanning their uh, phone on this thing. That was like the guy was like out like just to like pretend like it's the bus like the guy was outside and they were scanning their phone and the guy was just checking like everyone's scanning their phone to pay for their fare. Cold rice, dumplings, and a sweet sour sauce for 300 Japanese yen. So this is for 300? 300. Yummy? Okay. okay. Ume, let me get one, let me get one. Yeah, it looks, it looks nice. Wh which one you think is better? Which one is better? Uh, I don't know which one. Yeah, I know hot or ice. Wh mm. Which one? You think? What do you think? Hot good or ice good? Uh, hot. Hot? Okay, uh, hot, please. Onagaishimas. And this is called what? Onami wa nandasuka? 
これはみたらし団子みたらし団子みたらし団子あ、okay、そうか、okay You know, I'm just gonna give you a thousand, yeah, it's easier. <laughs> All right. Yeah, something also in Japan, I just wanna show you guys real quick, is that you have a lot of change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, look at this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, look at this, guys. Yeah, tasty? Oishi desu ka? Oishi, okay. Yeah, okay, I wanna try it out. <laughs> look at this. Ooh, my hands are on fire. We didn't get a tissue, but yeah, it looks, it looks good. Let's see, where could we eat this at? This is a question. Our first Japanese street food of the day. Never had it before, but it looks really good. So it was、uh, rice balls. It's rice balls dipped in like some syrup. Mm. These look like two eyes. Alright, let me cool it down for a second because it is pretty hot and I'll see you once I start eating it. Okay, so I've been walking around a while, so I found this area over here. So let me put down my camera and let's try this out. This street food of today. Just gonna lean down. Okay. So let me show you real quick. So this is rice balls and sweet soy sauce, yeah. So, as always, Miss Fanana, let's give it a try. <laughs> Very chewy. Chewy and soft. Yeah, chewy, soft.、Uh, very hot, too. But I did let it cool down.、Uh, There's one ball that's like sticking inside, which I do like also. They wrapped it in like bamboo paper. But. <laughs> Delicious. I recommend it. You come to. You also get this. I get the last rice ball. Something that you have to know in Japan. I, I heard that a lot of people they don't like you to walk around and eat and also walk around and drink. So keep that in mind when you go to Japan. If you want to eat or walk around, fortunately, a lot of the street food stalls they don't have places for you to sit down. But just keep that in mind. Try to like pull stop somewhere and just eat real quick. Don't try to walk around and eat because even in Osaka they have this like announcement like, please don't walk and eat and drink. Here, let me show you the last bowl. It's good. Sweet and chewy. All right, that being said, let's go back to the main road and see more beautiful Kyoto. Well, I was going to leave right now, but I want to show you how a typical Japanese vending machine looks like and also the prices. Every vending machine will have different prices depending on location. Right now, we get some coffee, we get some water, and these are all the different prices. I am kind of thirsty, so we are going to get a drink right now, but you know. Because I always like to eat and drink. This is a normal person. And let's try to cross the road. A lot of taxis over here, too. Unfortunately, the taxis are kind of expensive in Japan compared to other Asian countries. I, I just take public transportation so far in Japan. Only if I really need to, I'll take a taxi.、And、then I just want to show you also the other drinks over here, too. They have some lemon drink, carbonated soft drink for $150. Evian. Evian is actually quite cheap over here. 500 ml of Evian is 150. Sorry, 500 ml is 140. Yeah. See over here, they even have advertisements. And something that's really hard in Japan is you can't find trash cans, but some places will have、uh, just places like you just drink from the vending machine and you can put it over here, but they strictly just want people just to put, you can see over here, like no other trash, just like cans and bottles. Oh, then over here you can see too, there's、uh, guys pulling you. So if you want,、uh, you get pulled on these rickshaws, which、uh, they vary in prices also depending where you get the rickshaw driver from.、But、I did see like it's around like for like 30 minutes, like 4,000 Japanese yen. That's really cool just to go around the city. We may do that in another video. You have to let me know. Do you want me to do it in another video? Do you? <laughs> I'll see. because... I never had a Japanese rickshaw before. I did it in India, which is pretty interesting. 
So yeah, let's uh, get a drink. Uh, hmm. What do we get? What do we get? I think since I'm recording a drink for you, I mean recording a video for you guys, let's get something like this fire drink looks interesting. I think it's coffee fire. Kirin. So Kirin is a famous Japanese name brand. Let me look at my change. Look at this, so much change. You can't, when you go to Japan, you cannot escape change because some places only take cash, believe it or not. Even though Japan, they say it's a very advanced country, which it is in some ways. Other ways, it's not really advanced because look at this. Okay. So just put 100 here. Put 10 Japanese yen. And then we just click on the button. And the drink should come in. Kirin. Oh, actually, this, this whole machine is uh, by Kirin. They even have water too. And I believe they also sell uh, alcohol as well. Let's see. There we go. Kirin fire drink. Let's give it a try. How are we gonna do this? Just gonna put this drink over here. Open it with one hand. Actually, let me shake it too. Sometimes it's good to shake the instant coffees, right? Okay. Okay, bismillah, let's give it a try. Nice, nice, sweet, uh, creamy. Pretty good. This is the can, how it looks like. So you can see, uh, uh, mostly it's all in Japanese. There's no English, because I know some countries you go to in Asia, they'll have like English and Japanese, I'm sorry, English and like their local language, like for the ingredients and stuff, but no, this only has Japanese. And also keep in mind in Japan, some people do know English, but it's not normal. Like in other countries I've been to in Asia, some countries know more English, for example, the Philippines or even Korea, even Malaysia, they know English pretty well. But Japanese people, I'm surprised, very little know English, but it's okay. I understand I'm in their country. I just speak their language, which I can only speak a little bit currently right now. And yeah, also I want to tell you, there's a lot of like parking spaces here. So right now I'm just literally in a parking lot over here. And let me just show you the prices. Like if you want to park your car for 30 minutes, it's 300 Japanese yen. And uh, all right, so it's saying in the morning it's this price. And then uh, in the evening, it's going to be 400. So a little bit more expensive. So depending what time, what time you come here, you're gonna have to pay different prices for the parking lot. And there's not even that many spaces, you can see, but some, they do level cars and stuff too, so. Hi, hello. Yeah, so let's finish this up. It's pretty good, nice and sweet. And uh, that being said, let's, I guess, investigate more of Kyoto. What is this, what is this thing over here too? Before I, before I leave you in the scene, there's some beer. They have a lot of strange things. You just like walk around these side roads and stuff. All right, let me finish this up and I'll see you in a second. Now we are back in the city life. Just look at this. It's amazing really just to see how many people are here. Is something I really, I, I knew Kyoto was crowded, but I didn't know it was this crowded. These are the cars of Japan too. So I think because this is a very touristic city, that's why we see a lot of taxi cabs. Literally, I'd say like 50% of the cars we're seeing right now are just taxi cabs. Even the Infinity over there is a taxi cab. Shout out to Infinity. And let me just show you like some of the shops they have over here too as well. Look at this, a whole place. Just uh, for chopsticks. It's amazing. Different prices for chopsticks. Because believe it or not, some people in Asia really take chopsticks very serious. Just how it's crafted, how it's made. Even they have like different like private companies. Your name could be engraved in the chopsticks, which is pretty cool. Wow. Really cool, like they have 2,200 chopsticks, 1,100. This for 800, 800, sorry, 880. And they have kids' chopsticks too to teach the kids like how to 
Use the chopsticks. Wow, well, 14,300 Japanese yen for chopsticks. So every 1,000 Japanese yen is around like $6 USD. So six, let me see, like, I don't know, that's a lot of money. It's like $70 for chopsticks. 100, 1,100, oops, almost like hit those baskets just right over there. Really interesting. Because what I love about the Japanese culture, they take everything as an art, even eating as an art. Like, you get some like really expensive beef over here and also expensive sushi that like a Japanese chef will come to you or you go to his place, like he'll only have like four customers for two hours. Just really show you stuff very nice and cost a few hundred dollars. We're not at that YouTube level just yet. Hopefully with your support, we'll get on that level and I can show you some like private, like really nice uh, Japanese stuff. I just saw it online because I really love Japan. So I just like to see things about Japan and it's really cool to have your own like private chef. And these shops are really cool. Just like the decorations inside of the shop. I know this video was going to be like, I want to show you like the village over here, but also just like if you go into the, some of these shops, it just, Really cool just how they do like all the decorations and yeah they have like barrels and stuff really nice what is this what are they selling kind of curious let's see real quick it's a lot of different types of desserts mm. oh, okay really cool Oh, and then I also want to tell you, since uh, Japan has a lot of foreigners, there are a lot of money exchange places too. But I've seen most of the currency they want to do money exchanges like Filipino pesos, Malaysian ringgits, uh, Indonesian rupiah, USD, euro. So just make sure you have a strong currency with you. Because I actually have uh, dirhams, which come from the United Arab Emirates. And unfortunately, a lot of places do not want to exchange it, or if they do want to exchange it, it's going to be a bad rate. And I don't want you to get ripped off as a person who's watching my channel, so, you know. And then also, if you want to buy things, they have a lot of these tax-free shops, too. They sell, like, a lot of, like, a lot of pharmaceutical goods. Because in Japan, if you're a foreigner, you do get tax-free off. Just uh, make sure you have your uh, passport with you. And sometimes they do have a threshold, like, you have to buy more than 5,000 worth of things, which is 5,000 Japanese yen is about, like, $50. Just keep that in mind. And now we have Family Mart, a convenience store. Even families, some Family Marts, look at this, they have money exchange. Yeah, so let me just show you like what kind of like different uh, bills. And usually a lot of places will take these kind of uh, currencies. Yeah, so they're mostly Asian currencies, but we have like the USD, the Euro, the Great British Pound, Chinese RMB, the Malaysian Ringgits, but yeah. So make sure you have a good Asian currency or a foreign currency like a Euro or the dollar. Oh, we got the Mitsubishi, all right. So I love to see Japanese cars. Is that an Evo? Sounds like an Evo, but I don't know, old school Evo. Okay, we just approached the street that I want to show you over here. It's called Hano Mikoji Street. And this is the street. Look at this, guys. We got the traditional Japanese buildings. And this is what I love to see and I love to show you. It's the main thing of the video. <laughs> but also just cool just to uh, see how it is. Love to like go to like older traditional areas and just see how it is because for me I think it's really nice. Wow, look at this, guys! It's really nice. This is how Japan used to look like, guys. I think this is 
an area that's mostly touristic because I am hearing people speaking Chinese and also you can just see there's a lot of foreigners here too. But wow, really nice. And then also you can see people dressed up in their traditional Japanese outfits and their kimonos. It's a very nice place to take some pictures. Seems like a lot of the restaurants here too, you have to like wait outside and just uh, yeah, just wait. Because I've noticed like some of these shops, like there's like long lines, like just when we just entered it, if you guys noticed there was like a long line of people. It seems like vehicles can come here too, which in most countries when they have like the old village area or whatever, usually they don't allow that in a certain time. Let's see what kind of stuff we can see over here. An imitation, the graceful world of Geiko and Maiko. So, oh, look at this. They have like some beautiful traditional Japanese drama or performance. Yeah. I'm your tour guide. And something that I just noticed too, that like a lot of people don't want you to like know photography on private roads. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Find up to 10,000 without photo permits. So I guess like, this is the main road and I don't know if this is a private road. Obviously I'm not Japanese, so I wouldn't know. But uh, interesting. So I'm just gonna I guess, stay keeping walking straight on the main road. Cause I don't want to, I don't know, go on the side and offend someone. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? Beautiful Japan. But just keep mindful, guys. Uh, try to be respectful towards uh, people like dr dressing up in like kimonos and also like you know, uh, traditional Japanese wear. Because I did hear that there are some problems with foreigners, unfortunately, that like people are a little bit disrespectful towards them. Or like there's a video clip of some lady like following another lady dressing up in like some traditional Japanese wear. So just keep that in mind. Because obviously when you go to a country, you never want to offend the people and you want to be respectful. And I love Japan, so. <laughs> now obviously, you know, just uh, keep that in mind. Because I think Japan does have a little problem with that, but uh, just as long as you're, you know, respectful, you're not really like focusing on anyone, I think you should be fine. Like right now, I'm just recording, having a good time showing you, and make sure you're liking and subscribing too, you know how it is. Ooh, this crown. You see, look, every taxi is Toyota crown. That's a classic taxi of Asia, I'd say. Really nice. I believe I've been here, or I don't know if Kyoto has like a few other areas that are similar to this. But last time I've been here, it was kind of different. But I don't know if I'm like, maybe I want a different road or something, because it was like a little bit like hilly area. Fifteen minutes to park here is two hundred Japanese yen. Local sightseeing guide maps, so it's just pretty cool in Japan. They have a lot of like local sightseeing guide maps So like for example show you where we're at and then like just in case you want to see like so we're over here And then it looks like there's a temple over there. We can go there and see how it is but just like in general usually uh, in touristy areas they'll have like this big sightseeing map <clears throat> I think the temple we saw on the map is probably this one. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. It looks like all of like the part of the building is made out of uh, bamboo. And bamboo is very reliable uh, construction, high construction material. Yeah, so like a lot of these houses can last a long time with bamboo. So in Asia, a lot of the places will actually use bamboo for 
a lot of things like even in hong kong they use it for like uh scaffolding like when they're building a building they'll uh use that to like help build the building scaffolding yeah scaffolding i don't use that word that often in english but yeah <clears throat> i think this is the temple i'm not really sure let's go inside and see how it is <laughs> yeah this whole area is pretty big let's go here <clears throat> and see if we can investigate a little bit because this this temple looks really cool right here let's see what kind of uh, signs they have over here too no commercial photography, no group photography, no tripod, selfie stick, no... Whoa, they have so many different... No games, no sports, no pets, a lot of options. I don't know if I can enter here. I don't know, we'll see. I had none of that, so... Oh, it seems like it's, uh, what does it say? From 10 a.m. to 5 p.m.? What time is it right now on my phone? It's 6 o'clock, so... We can't enter now, but we can enter the vicinity and just show you guys how it is. Alright, cool. You just enjoy the architecture. This looks like a small mini park. And now we are in a park in Japan construction and what's kind of cool is a lot of times when you see construction here in japan they're also like sorry we have construction because they know it's a nuisance because a lot, anytime when you live in a big city and there's construction like it's very annoying so when i was talking about scaffolding like scaffolding i feel like i'm like saying it wrong, wrong but uh this is what they have but in hong kong a lot of times they use bamboos instead of like metal pipes scaffolding there we go scaffolding yeah Oh, this must be what... Hmm. Should research this area a little bit more. But uh, it looks very beautiful. Let's go to the right. Look at that, guys. This might be like a... Uh, older palace. Wow. When I think of Japan, this is like what I think about. Like, just older traditional buildings, sushi and beautiful architecture many other things too anime maybe some ladies too but <laughs> they're just a general just like uh, i love the culture people aren't nice but something i have to tell you guys that in japan i did notice people are a little bit to themselves too so like in other asian countries they might be open like hey you're a foreigner oh my god blah 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 in japan they don't really care if you're a foreigner they're just like like I've been to, you guys know I've been traveling a lot. And if you want to see my channel, just in case if you're new to my channel, you check it out. Like, in so many countries, some countries are like, oh, wow, really interested in you being a foreigner. In Japan, it seems like they're more chill. They're like, nah, they don't really care, but they're also very respectful too. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay, so this garden area seems like it's pretty big. Let's head back to... Uh, the little village area that we're just at and see more of that because I think maybe it's more interesting for you guys because now it's like kind of dead. I want to see more people, see more interactions and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the place we're just at. It's called Ryosuken Temple and uh, yeah. Beautiful entrance. And now let's go to our right. So we just saw this road and let's go to the right and see what's up. You got a rickshaw driver. You guys let me know. Do you guys want to make a whole video of just like a rickshaw driver taking me around? Either Kyoto. I did see them in Osaka too. And I know they're in Tokyo too. So you guys have to know. Have to let me know. What do you want to see? The rick, rickshaw video. In Tokyo. Osaka. Kyoto. Nara. They have in like a lot of different uh, cities. Because right now I'm in the Kansai region of Japan. So that's uh, mostly... Yeah, that's mostly where I want to be staying at because if you live in Osaka, which I advise you guys, stay in Osaka, go to Nara for a day or two. I think Nara one day is good. Kyoto, go for a couple days and you come back to Osaka. It's only like about like a 40 minute, one hour journey 
depending where you're at in Osaka and also where you want to go to Kyoto or Nara and also go to Kobe too. You can literally like Osaka is like the hub of Kansai region and you can just literally do like day trips. And the reason why I'm saying stay in Osaka is because hotels and everything is a lot cheaper in Osaka compared to other cities in Japan. What I did initially, my first Japanese trip, was I went to Osaka, and I went to Kyoto, and then I took uh, the fast train from uh, Kyoto to Tokyo. So depending what you want to do, it's up to you. So yeah, I guess there's a lot of private uh, residency over here. And uh, something I wanted to show you guys, like look at this. I've seen it in Osaka, and I've seen it around Japan. They have this little like tricycle. That's this big thing to like store a lot of stuff inside of it, but just yeah, funny to look at it. It goes on main roads and yeah, pretty interesting. That's made by Honda too. I call it a tricycle or also a motorcycle on steroids. Let's see, we're just going to be walking a little bit more straight to see if we find anything more interesting for you guys. If not, we're going to head towards the downtown area. And the town, downtown area is popping. A lot of people, a lot of things to see. Don't get me wrong, I love this area too. Let's see, they have some other vending machines over here. Looks like another Kieran, yeah, Kieran vending machine. And something to let you guys know that they do have vending machines here in Japan that sell alcohol. You believe that? So, like, people could just go up to a vending machine and buy alcohol. Which to me, I think it's kind of crazy because I'm from America and you have to be 21 or older to get alcohol. And these vending machines obviously don't check ID. You just put in the money and you'd buy it. So I don't, like, like they have a good trust system over here that they're not worried about like the kids buying alcohol or something, which is kind of crazy in some countries that would not fly. This also seems like a crowded area. Hmm. You go straight, left. I think we're gonna go right. It seems like a crowded area. Just explore a little bit more of this area. Why not? So look at this, we get like more of a modern style building. And then on our right is a little bit old school type of buildings. Pretty cool. And I love how they make the buildings out of like bamboo and wood and yeah, Lexus. It says Asahi on this uh, vending machine, so maybe it's one of those vending machines I was telling you about. This is warning 24 hour security system. Oh, I know it isn't, okay. Hmm. Interesting, what is this? It looks like a little shrine area. Let's check it out, why not? Oh, and there's Osaka, I mean, sorry, Kyoto has so many different things to show, but I was like, hey, let me just show you a little bit of Kyoto today, and then if you want to see more of Kyoto, definitely record more for yourself, so stay tuned. Let's see, what is this area? There is a bamboo forest, which definitely I want to record, and also there's a monkey park, monkey park, which I wanted to show you too. It's like a monkey park on a little hillside mountaintop. And I went to a couple of times, but I, I never made like a full length video about it. I just showed some like short clips about it. Okay, very interesting. So beautiful, the gold, the wood. And I love how like they upkeep a lot of the stuff. And I believe these over here are just a lot of wishes that people made. They pay some money and then just make some wish. Wow, this building looks cool. So I guess over here you could like say something and then hang it up if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure how it works, the system, but yeah. They even have some little wooden pieces. All right, let's just go. See if they have anything in English. But here's in Japanese. If you could read Japanese, you'd see what I'm saying. There we go. 
Okay, this is my Chinese friends. Hello. Hello. I don't know how to use this one. You don't know? I don't know. Why? I forgot. Now you're recording. Now you're recording. Why you tell you can you tell me how it I can tell you yeah. Yes. Right now you're recording. I uh, know. Picture. Oh you want to do picture, okay? Yes. Let me see. Yeah. Don't you show. Yeah. So you have to press this button on the side. Yeah. So and, uh, guys, she's using GoPro just like me. Yeah. And then here. Oh, this is and then you have to press this. Yeah. And this will show you like there is this video there and then here's go. picture. Okay. And and then you have to, I think you have to press this, like for example, let's say we take a picture. Three, two, one. That's a picture. Uh, if I use the radio. If you want to use video, then you have yeah. to press this button on the side. Okay. And jigger, raho, da jigger. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very comfortable. What's your name? Nina? Canada. Canada, Canada. Where, where in Canada? Oh, Vancouver. Vancouver, okay. I'm from America. I'm from Michigan. Michigan. Oh. Next, next to Canada, but the other I side know. of Canada. Yes, I know. Michigan. Beautiful place. Have you been to Vancouver? No, nah, I've only been to Toronto. I've been to uh, Toronto, uh, Niagara Falls, those kind of areas. Canada. Oh, you came here by yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love to travel and see other places, so that's why I came How here. How you talk to them? They could speak English. Huh? How you talk to Japanese? Well, can you show uh, you? Can you show you Indian? Indian? May want to? You work in China? No, I used to stay in China, so I was in China, I was in China. Handsome guy, you so... Beautiful, beautiful lady. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you so much. You have to look in the mirror sometimes, you'll see, very beautiful. <laughs> Alright, bye-bye, take care. Enjoy. I love meeting nice people. Yeah, so I was actually just helping her with her GoPro because she saw I had GoPro, so she was like, how do you do this? I got her GoPro, no worries. Solo got your back. So yeah, here looks like a lot of other different like wish type things. Hmm. Really cool. Look at these pictures. <laughs> wow, what is this to like wash your hands to refresh yourself? Yes. You see how they use the bamboo? It has the water. Hope it's clean water. No, I'm just playing. I think it is. It's over here. Let's let's get out of this place real quick. What are we looking at? We're looking at some piggy. Look at that piggy. But I don't know what. I wasn't planning to make this video so long, but just you know, as we're going along. I think I found the uh, one of like the most famous buildings here in Kyoto. Oh look, they have the the little three-wheeler motorcycle on steroids over here too. Man, this place goes on forever. There's like I think there's a beautiful. Oh, I like barely saw it. The beautiful building is right over here. Ah, uh, okay. This is more of the area that I wanted to show you. Hmm. We may have to save it for another video. But I just want to cross the street real quick and show you that uh, there is a place where you could rent kimonos too. And we get an idea of like how much is a kimono. kimono. Hopefully they have a price in the window. Yeah, I remember this street from a long time ago. I need to save on my maps to come back here later and show you guys more of this area. Kimono rental just right across the streets. Uh, do I see the prices? In the, I don't think I see the prices. As we're waiting around the traffic light, let me just show you. There's a family mart over here. And it seems like this area would be nice to visit uh, a little bit earlier because it is becoming later at night. 
Family Mart. If, okay, so that's about to be uh, red, and then we can go. Yes, we can. All right, so this is more of the more of the older old village traditional area that I just showed you. Uh, look at this. Okay. Okay, guys. So here's the village area, and here's a kimono kimono rental shop. Let me like save it on my Google Maps so I know exactly where this is. It's called Kyo Aruki. Here, let me see if we cross the street right now. Is it free? Yeah, it's okay. Ryozan Museum of History. This area looks like it's very poppin', but it uh, seems like it's also going to close pretty soon. Here, let's walk around a little bit more. So here you go, here's a kimono rental place. Luggage storage, 500 per day. So if you have some luggage too, you can rent a kimono, store some luggage. Let me see just real quick. So it says like 2,900. Please come to the second floor. Man, I, I wish I had a girl with me so I could just like show you how it is like rent a kimono, kimono and stuff. Cause I know if you're a female, you would love to see that. But you have an idea of how it is. So that being said guys, time to finish this video. I hope you appreciated it. And I have, thank you so much. Big shout out to the channel members too. You guys are helping the channel, help support the channel with your membership. It means a lot because this is what keeps me going. And even if you're just viewing the video, liking, commenting, really helps out too. And also sharing too. That being said, love you so much. I'm just gonna be exploring a little bit more of this area and I'll see you on the next one. Peace, and I'll talk to you later.